It's a tra traditional spiritual system of the Yoruba people of Nigeria. Ifa is an African traditional way of life. Some may call it a spirituality, some may call it a religion, mm -hmm. but it is a way of harmonizing ourselves with the world around us, the universe around us, yeah. so that we can flow through this life. Ifa is the study or the observation of life. When you study and observe life, you begin to recognize things about yourself, others, your community. It's countless revelations. Ifa is a way that we focus that intent, focus that observation. Ifa is a way of life. And through that, uh, we study a way of life through the deities of nature that are explained through nature. Mm -hmm. And we, in a five, we believe in one God, and we be, but we believe those aspects of God are carried out or explained through forces of nature. So those are just extensions of God rather than we don't pray to, to the rain or we don't pray to the rocks. We, we pray to that force of life that is through God, through mm -hmm. those things that are living. But the practice and the traditions are, is just a way of life. It's, it's just how we, how we communicate with the Creator and our surroundings and our ancestors. Our ancestors then are our link to divinity. They are our link to divinity. That's the best way to explain it. That we are praising our ancestors because also what they provide for us is a divine record of consciousness of our family. They, they, they are the divine internet. If we are trying to draw on our own personal files within the memory of our own computer, then our access to information is limited. If we take that same computer and connect to the internet, the whole different thing happens. It's the same computer, but now it's connected to the internet. The analogy is that we are the computer. That if we try to rely on our own brain to come up with all the answers that we are dealing with on a daily basis, especially in a world of oppression like this, in a world of unfairness like this, in a world of injustice like this, in a world where we see things being destroyed that we care about, then we are indeed lost because all we have is our one lifetime. When we draw upon the lifetimes of our ancestors, it's like our computer is now connected to the divine internet. And once we connect to that internet, then we have answers that extend across lifetimes. We begin to see patterns in our family. We begin to understand patterns of our resistance in the family. We begin to understand the things that the ancestors did and why. We, um, we honor our ancestors. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, ancestors are the foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, an Egun Joko is uh, a ceremony that helps us to communicate and honor and give thanks to the ancestors. Um, Egun is the Yoruba word for ancestor, and Joko is means to come sit. To come sit, okay. Yes, so Egun Joko, come sit. We in, um, invite the ancestors to come sit with us. We make offerings, we say prayers, we make requests, and then the ancestors uh, give us the messages, and the messages that we get we know are from them because we have appealed to them mm -hmm. to come. Ori, O means he, she, or it. Re means to see. When we look at our head, we can see that our head is a sight of many, all of our senses. We hear from our head, we see from our head, we smell from our head, we taste from our head. We touch, we think of touch being here. But all too often, we can actually pick up something that's not hot enough to burn our hands, but yet we can burn our mouth with it. So I see. Touch is most sensitive here as well. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that puts all five of our senses as having their strongest locations within our head. Ori is the convergence because of that sensory region, but also the sensory apparatus. It allows the energy of the spirit to enter. It allows the energy of the heart to enter. It allows the energy of the body, of the uh, mind to be a part of the process so that all of that is taking place inside of physically or metaphysically the head. So that's what we call the ori, mm -hmm. that place where the mind, spirit, and heart meets. Ori Sha. 
Yeah, Ori again means the head. Shah means to own. Shah means to own. Yeah, so the owner of the head. The owner Each of the head. elemental force within the universe is named Shah. 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 Shah.
to create that sonic vibration for that energy to ride down on because music creates a semi-solid mass. You understand? It's like this stuff is ethereal around us all the time, but music creates a semi-solid mass that becomes kind of a warm, or not even a kind of, it is a wormhole into other dimensions, into those places, into those divinis into the divinosphere, into the, the uh, levels of life that we're not aware of around us for it to be pulled through. When it pulls through, miracles happen. <laughs> they call him to open the path. It is a cultural adaptation for any human being, any person. So there are things that you must adapt to culturally. Mm -hmm. But it is not exclusive. Mm -hmm. It's for human beings. <laughs> it's for humanity. It's for humanity. It's not for Africans. No. It's a way of life for humanity. Humanity, yeah. It's just that it's the African contribution that I say would fall along the lines of Buddhism, Taoism. Hinduism, things that have an intense scientific study, an intense liberty, a way that you live, and scientific and medicinal practices. You see, say scientific practices that have proven results. E5 fits all that. So, where a lot of the things that folks bring to the table, many religions around the world, they haven't done those three requirements. And then we have that last but not least is thousands upon thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. So it's being offered to us out of antiquity. Mm -hmm. Now that's also something that can give folks an understanding that they don't have to take it as a one dimensional thing. They can look and look and look and, and we'll always find more mm -hmm. and more and more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to